Well, you're listening to Rudy on the radio, and I have on the phone with me, oh, she is so talented, and uh, and I am just blessed by her music and her ministry and her personality and her family. Bethany Bordeaux, uh, thank you for joining us today. So good to have you. Oh, thank you. Well, thanks so much for having me. This is this is going to be super fun. So A- absolutely. Happy Thanksgiving, by the way, since um, uh, they were going to be hearing this broadcast on Thanksgiving Day. Yes. Well, happy Thanksgiving to you, too. And I think in this year of 2020, we need to just, I mean, let's just make every day Thanksgiving. Amen. Right? And just look for the things. <laughs> Look for the things we're thankful for. So, <laughs> absolutely. You know, I have to ask you that question. How have you navigated, you know, your way through this crazy year? Yeah, it's been an interesting year. So, the bulk of my uh, work as a violinist is as a touring violinist. Right. So, g- going around the country and playing at conferences and churches with sometimes by myself, mostly as part of a band or with another artist. Uh, and so, we got we did one event in February, and then we were coming home from one that that like the first day of March, and right. then we watched. I watched like thirty something events cancel in the space of like three days. Mm. So, uh, which I know is I'm not unique to that. You know, every there have been so many people that have lost jobs and and had similar things happen. So it was an interesting thing to watch and kind of have to reinvent myself. Um, Incidentally, Nashville, Tennessee, where I live, put a two week shelter in place order uh, down pretty quickly. And my two year old daughter stopped taking naps on day one. Oh my goodness. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. That's what happens when they are, they turn two. Yeah. So we, um, so that was real fun that she chose that day to stop napping. Um, and we, we haven't really napped through this whole pandemic. I think she's taken three. Oh my goodness. She has um, your energy. Yeah. Yeah. It's been all of a sudden I was home 24 seven with a toddler that no longer naps. Right. It's been an interesting year. (laughs) Oh Lord. You know, when you think about it because touring like you said uh, artists and, and and tour you know they they depend on these concerts they depend on these venues and, and conferences and it's it has been a year where where I, I love what you said reinventing or or going back to the lord and saying lord how can we do what we do in a different way sure and i think you know there's there's a lot of factors at play i mean there's there's first of all you know this very basic like it's our vocation so it's how we how we earn a living. Um, so there's that piece of it, but then it's also like, it's our, it's our talent. I mean, I feel like the Lord entrusts you with things that you're good at and things that you enjoy and things that you have to offer to other people. So that, so I feel, you know, I mean, a responsibility too to like, this is something he's entrusted me with this ability to do this thing. And so I'm still looking for avenues to continue to share that. And then also, it's my ministry. So, you know, how can I continue to encourage other people when I, you know, can't, I mean, that's kind of one of the beautiful things about live events is you get to encourage people that you're not even ever going to meet. You right. know? I mean, you might mm-hmm. meet a few people mm-hmm. in a meet and greet line afterwards, but, but the bulk of the people attending, you get to encourage them without, without ever meeting them. And so it's like, well, if I don't, how can I encourage people? I don't even know. Like, how can I, so it's kind of been a threefold thing. Like, how do I continue to earn a living, but also honor God with the talent he's entrusted me with, but also encourage people? So it's, it's an interesting thing. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I know for me, the, the at, at the very beginning, the hardest uh, uh, adjustment for me was preaching to a room that was empty. Mm. You know, I'm such a... <laughs> Because I do play, you know, even if you don't meet everybody in the, you play all, I do play off a crowd's energy, you know what I'm saying? And, 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 and people response and, and those, and suddenly now, you know, I, I was joking with some of my, my old friends. I said, we didn't learn anything about in seminary about how to preach to nobody. <laughs> <laughs> there was a, there wasn't a preaching to the wall class yeah. in the seminary. <laughs> uh-uh. You know, and suddenly they, now we're now we're here, you know, and trying to minister to people that you can't see. I agree. I did a an on an online so one of the privileges of my career is um getting to partner with uh Kelly Minter, who's right. a brilliant 
speaker. And that's and how we artist. met you. That's and, how we met you exactly, on the, Ke- exactly. the Kelly Minter weekend. Uh huh. Yeah, and she she the girl does everything. She's um I mean she's written a cookbook and Bible studies and she speaks and she's a brilliant musician and songwriter. Um, but so I get to travel with her and do a lot of her events. And we did a, a simulcast event this past September, just uh, you know two months ago, of this cultivate. Uh, women's conference that she does and to have the full band and you know we had the whole thing we there was a local church that we were able to set up in and you know be able to be socially distanced and all that right in the filming process but um we had we had 10 people as a live audience yeah and they were all masked and it was in a in an auditorium that normally seats like 2000 or right something. and so to have that same energy level because you know there were people tuning in from literally across the world. I think we had all 50 states and then four four countries. Um, So we have people tuning in from everywhere and to keep that energy level up when you've got 10 people spread around this huge room and they're, they're wearing masks. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I believe me. I'm, I'm, you're preaching to me. I understand yeah, that. Yeah. Water, I sure uh-huh, I'm going, Oh no, but I, I yeah. totally. And, and again, because, because it is ministry is not just going through the most, it, it is a connection, a holy connection. And, 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 and that happens only when the, the Holy Spirit is allowed with people in the room that you can, you know, literally something wonderful happens. And, and, and I missed that part. No doubt about it. I missed that yeah. part in 2020. But I agree. you're here today with us because you, you, you know, God used you in the midst that even in my life, I started to look forward every day to the oh. to the hymns from home. Right. The home, yeah. the, the home hymns. With Bethany yes. Bordeaux, and uh, <laughs> seriously, I, I'm not just saying that, Bethany. I look forward to that, and it amazes me how you all can be in different places and sound yeah. like you're. You know, <laughs> how does that happen? Yeah, you know, I'm not. You know, I love music, but I don't. I'm not the one who makes it. I'm the one who appreciates right. it. So how do how do you do that when you're in different places and you're and you sound like holy smoke? This is this is amazing. It was it was wild. Well, I'll tell you what it's 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 part hard work and part the magic of technology. But um, I'll give you a brief if you, if you'll allow me the time, sure. a brief overview of kind of the project and what I did. Um, so when you know I'm mentioning kind of how do I continue to make music in this time period, but also how do I reach people I don't even know and encourage them? So it was a twofold thing. And uh, when Nashville gave us about like a four day heads up that this shelter in place order was coming. Right. And so my husband and I were sitting and talking and, you know, I was watching events cancel and we were, he works in live events as well. He worked for um, Compassion International, mm. which is a, a great, nonprofit. absolutely. So he was seeing his events cancel. And so we were, you know, we were just having these heart to hearts at night about kind of what, what the season would be like. And so I said, you know, I think, I mean, I guess, with the advent of social media and you can reach so many people, maybe I'll just start recording hymns because I, I love the old hymns. Yeah. I grew up in a church that really valued that and, uh, and it rubbed off. And so I said, I think I'm just going to, you know, just set my camera up and just record myself playing hymns and then I'll post one a day. Cause you know, we thought this was going to be a two week long. Exactly. And exactly. Fine, right. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. So he was like, well, that sounds like a good idea. So, you know, I'm thinking 14 hymns. Okay. I can do that. So I did, uh, I think I did three episodes and then I, you know, music is such a, there's such a community. Yep. Um, and there's, there's just really, and I know that you can experience it as a listener too, but as a musician, there's just a magic that happens when you create with others. And, uh, and so I, I thought, you know, I'm just going to start calling some of my friends that are musicians and asking if they would be willing to jump in and, and do a duet with me, you know, playing accompaniment. So, uh, the fir- my first two calls were a dear friend of mine, and then also my minister of music at my at my current church, and they were crazy enough to say yes. And so, uh, what the process was was we would choose a hymn, we would have a brief phone call, kind of talk through the arrangement, uh-huh. um, which for non musicians is kind of like just you know your your order of things like are you going to do a chorus or a verse or whatnot so we talked through the arrangement and then they would have the difficult task 
of recording their accompaniment part without the benefit of the melody. So they, you know, like if they're sitting down at piano, say they're, they sit down at their piano and they're having to play it and imagine in their head what I might be doing. Oh, wow. Um, so, so, th- so they're doing their part and s- then sending it to you? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so wow. They would do their part and send it, then they would send it over, email it right. over to me. So just, you know, prop up your iPhone kind of thing, <laughs> email it over to me. And I would, which if you watch those videos, you don't see any, um, you don't see any earbuds or anything. So I have these like, custom molded things that fit in my ear <laughs> uh-huh. that you don't see. So I would put those in and play um, their video on my computer um, off the screen and I would be listening through my earbuds and then I would play along. Um, and sometimes it went really well and sometimes it was hard. I, I, no. I, there was one that there Go was ahead. one that I just couldn't I just couldn't get it right and I think I worked on it till like three in the morning and of course, my husband couldn't hear the accompaniment because it was only in my ears. So he was just hearing me like continually make mistakes and kind of kindly and lovingly suggested the next morning that maybe I not work till 3 a.m. anymore. <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. uh, but, so we would take those two pieces and then um, my my dear friend Michelle, who I think is also... Oh, she's been here a couple of times. Dr. Moosh. Yes, Dr. <laughs> Moosh. She's amazing. Um, she has some video editing skills that I do not have. And so she would take the two videos and put them side by side. And, um, and then we would post it and people seem to like it. Oh my goodness. I I thought you all could hear each other that, you know, to be honest, I, I, it sounded like, you know, even though you're all in different places, you're, you're kind of doing this simultaneously and you're telling me, Oh, that, that, that that makes me go even a louder. Wow. I can't (laughs) believe. Wow. It was a little wild and it was fun too because they, you know, they didn't hear what I did until they saw the final video. Mm. So they kind of didn't really have any idea what I was going to, what, what frosting I was going to put on the cake they had sent, you know, Uh and, um, but it, but it was, really it's, oh, tell me it's beautiful, beautiful. And, uh, the, the product, the fruit of that is a, a CD that we're playing today in its entirety on Thanksgiving day here on Lyft FM. But it's Bethany Bordeaux, hymns from home. Uh, mm-hmm. and, uh, and, and, uh, I was going to ask you, cause I've, I've always, is there a difference between a violinist and a fiddler or do you oh, have to play a different is it the same instrument, but just the way you play it? I've always wanted to know that, Bethany. Yes. No, that's a great question. So there's a lot of um, answers to that. The joke is usually the difference between a violin and a fiddle is $10,000. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, um, that a fiddle is a clunker and a violin is a nice instrument. But yeah, it's 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 the same instrument. Um, you Depending on what style of music you play, you tend to customize your instrument a little bit differently. So. Gotcha. I always explain it like, you know, if like you if you put different tires on a car, it's going to drive differently, mm-hmm. you know. Um, and so that's kind of the, there's different, very subtle changes that a classical violinist who plays in a symphony will, will do to make their violin kind of sound one way. Um, strings, the, the actual pieces of a metal string that you put on it, mm-hmm. um, they make those out of different materials. And so that's a great way to customize, to get like a real twangy country Western sure. sound. Mm-hmm. Or if you, or bluegrass, you like a steel string. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So that's, that's, that's the big difference. It's all style. And then just these little tiny customizations that you make. Uh, but I, I just love the fact to see growing up in North Jersey, uh, we didn't, we didn't have a whole lot of country music. So I kind of <laughs> stuck out because I, I, I devoured the country of the sixties and the seventies, you know, and, and I started yeah. to love bluegrass and nobody liked bluegrass but me. And talking about, you know, staying up to three, they would say, take your bluegrass and get out of here. But, uh, but I seriously, I, the, the violin and the fiddling it, to me, it, it just is always, I don't know. My heart just comes alive. It does. I just re- resonate with that. I wish I could play like you, but my goodness, I love that sound. It just brings me into the presence of God. Thank you. Well, I do think that there's, um, and then I don't know. I think there's a special anointing over stringed instruments, and I mean, even biblically, they come sure. up so frequently. You know, praise them with a with a string. You know, mm-hmm. <laughs> they're mentioned specifically. So, 
Uh, I do think that there is an anointing. Well, that. and and, th- and that's one of the questions I had for you because again, it's not just talent that comes through; it's it's the Holy Spirit. I mean, it's it's powerful. I mean, it it changes. Like there were days you'd be so discouraged, and then you know I, I would li- I would watch your daily uh, you know uh, gift to us, and I and I'm telling you, it wasn't again, and this not even with words. It was just mm-hmm. wow, Lord, thanks for thanks for, and so. So it's not just talent. It's also, like you said, an anointing that God just uses you in such a powerful way. Thank you, Rudy, for that. I, I really appreciate it. You know, I think, yeah, yeah. Mean, go ahead. It's definitely something that I that I think about. And I, I've said before, I hope that whenever the Lord chooses to take me home, I honestly, I hope it's when I'm playing. Yeah. <laughs> because yeah. I, I feel like it's the, it's the, whenever I'm playing, it's like the moment or it, 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 things make sense in my heart. Like, I feel like that's where my heart is when my heart is the purest and the most tuned to the Lord and what he most open to him and what he has to say is when I'm, when I'm playing, that's just kind of the, the conduit for me. That, I, I that totally, yep. I get it. Worship. I think, I think many people who love the Lord and love music and then God has used music. We totally get what you just said. Totally understand mm-hmm. that. You know, now you, the hymns, I didn't grow up with the hymns. I grew up, I grew up a Catholic boy who didn't have a whole lot of hymns. We had the nuns jamming on the, on the guitars back in the sixties, but we didn't have, you know, everybody wanted to be the singing nun, but uh, we, we didn't have, and, and so I didn't get the hymns until I became a believer later in my life. And, and it's funny because even in the darkest times and, and, and I love today's praise music. Don't get me wrong. Uh, you know, we play it here on sure. Lift FM. But I always go back to the hymns when, when it when it becomes desperate and dark. I just, you know, what is it about those wonderful songs that that have staying power, for lack of a better term? So one thing that one, and I'll, I promise I'll answer your question. But um, one thing that I did as I was creating this original series, um, this original social media series, was for each video I posted, I also posted a blog post and, um, I would do research on the person who wrote both the lyrics of the hymn and the person who wrote the music. And that's kind of a little known fact, but, um, most of the time with these, you know, what we call the old classic hymns, the music and the words were typically not written to go together. Right. Um, usually someone, you know, would write the hymn lyrics as you would write like a poem Mm -hmm. or, you know, something like that. And then they would find like a folk song that probably most people were already familiar with and they would kind of put them together. Um, And so that's, that's the way a lot of these pairings of music and lyric came apart. But I would dive into like, why was this music written? Why was this, lyric written and then um kind of write a piece of my own life experience and, and put it all together to accompany each post and um and some of these i'll tell you what some of these hymns both the music and the lyrics that i think there was just a it was it was a really beautiful thing of many of these authors and composers writing what they felt. Yeah. I mean, like it is well with your, it is well with my soul, for instance, it, you know, the man, right. the, the author of the lyric, his, his four daughters, Horatio Spafford. Yep. 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 Mm-hmm. And so he was sailing over the spot where his four daughters drowned right. and, and wrote this. Lyric. So, I mean, there's, you can't get, you can't get much more felt emotion than that, right. you know? And I think, and again, I'm not knocking contemporary. No, no, ex- exactly. There is a, ton of really amazing especially stuff you lot. you live in the hotbed of it all right i, I, do, I, I mean how is nashville not all it. saved with all that with all that you know sanctified you know <laughs> happening i always wonder exactly how is nashville exactly. not heaven <laughs> <I know. laughs> well it is a little slice of it i think no but i there's there's such amazing and i and they're definitely i mean i know you know stories of of people of modern day writers and and some of them really have these incredibly powerful testimonies as well. But I think there's just something about these hymns being written in these really like dire times that, that have also 
survived three or four hundred years of popularity. You know, there's just been this this legacy that's just built up around them over the years. And I I know that some of our more contemporary worship tunes will have that same staying power sure. you know, in another three hundred years. We just haven't gotten there yet. But I think it's it's the beauty of that legacy and that and knowing that you know, countless people have sung those same exact truths over the years to, you know, to express their through all different circumstances and situations on different parts of the planet, you know, some while they were dying, some while they were, you know, leading. Yeah. It's a, it's a whole lot bigger than we make it sometimes, isn't it? Yeah. 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 And you just can't, you can't replace, you can't replace that legacy that they have. So, and they're so singable, you know, Mm -hmm. the melodies are, are typically very lilting and beautiful and, um, and there's something for that to be said too. I got to tell you, because uh, again, be it not being, and you have it on your album, you do a version of Morning Has Broken. Uh, yeah. Remember, again, I didn't grow up with the hymns, so I'm in church one day and we're singing Morning Has Broken. I go, how did Cat Stevens get in here? You know, I, seriously, because <laughs> I always knew it as a Cat Stevens song. And I'm going, how did that get yeah. in the hymn book? Did he write now? And so you learn. It's just so funny because it's a. You know, we we come, we may come in different directions to it, but it, uh, what a beautiful, what a one of the many hymns you do. I mean, you do what a friend we have in Jesus. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Uh, uh, one that I didn't know a whole lot about. My shepherd will supply my need. Is that? Yeah. Yeah. So that that one I got to brag on. So I've got um, the music minister at my church in Nashville. Is um, he's just absolutely brilliant and. Um, percussionist composer has his phd i mean the guy's the guy's just super duper smart um and just a truly lovely human to go along yeah with no that's time. great but, yeah um so Sm- David, David smart Spira, and likable <laughs> smart and likable and talented what, yeah. what more can you ask for but so david madeira um and he writes and arranges a lot for our church so a lot of what we sing on sunday morning is stuff that he has taken and and arranged and you know made sure something really beautiful for our congregation so that was a hymn tune that i wasn't familiar with either uh that he found and arranged um to start doing in church and i just fell in love with it it's just absolutely just a stunning tune and really beautiful lyrics and so i asked him if he would be willing to let me write a string trio arrangement two violins and a cello to go on top of that um and so that's what you hear on the album is uh two violins and a cello and piano to to his arrangement of it but i thought it was just so beautiful to think about in this season where i mean we always have needs you know all of us have needs all the time but i think this year we've we've experienced more need and yeah, no, on a uh-huh. greater level, you know? Right. So just this concept of realizing that God is truly a provider and he, he does meet our needs and he wants to meet our needs. Yeah. Uh, Even in the midst of this really chaos and craziness. Mm-hmm. Yep. He's still, he's still yeah. who he is. Amen. Amen. Yeah, so that wasn't a super familiar tune, but it, it had to make the, it had to make the album. <laughs> for those reasons. <laughs> well, I hope this is the first of many. Out. I mean, I know you we have we have played your original album, but I hope that this opens yeah. the door. Uh, I know that many people are listening today and want to know what's the best vehicle they can go about getting it. Um, uh, you know, the, the album, again, is called Hymns from Home, which were um, birthed out of the, the pandemic and uh, every night. Mm-hmm. Uh, or, or every other night or whatever. It's, uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, you just sharing uh, a timely uh, gift with us. Uh, if somebody wants to get hymns from home, especially since uh, Christmas is uh, just around the corner, um, sure. what, what, can, what can they do? Absolutely. Well, I like to think that maybe this is the one thing your whole family can agree on at Thanksgiving and Christmas. Amen. <laughs> we'll hope that. Um, but they can, it's, it's available on iTunes for download. At, available, if you go to Amazon.com, you can also download just the MP3s there. Um, or you can go to BethanyBordeaux.com. It's B-E-T-H-A-N-Y-B-O-R-D-E-A-U-X.com. And you can order physical copies of the CD there and i've got some multi-packs um yeah you have some deals and things like that yes on on your website bethanybordeaux.com that's right and Mm. then also um 
the blogs that I started Yeah, I was going to ask you about that. Yeah, so those are still up at my website for all the original songs. When we went back and re-recorded um, and added some new tunes, I, I do want to throw that in there, that um, the CD is is re-recorded version, so it's not the original videos. Um, we got everything right when we did the CD. <laughs> oh, <why? laughs> uh, so you get, you get the good versions. But um, I also wanted to kind of give that blog some new life, and so Amen. I actually wrote, wrote a... Uh, a devotional guide, a listening guide. I'm not really sure what you call it, but um, so for each song on the album, it, there's a prayer that you can pray. There's a scripture verse that corresponds. And then there's some history on the hymn as well as again, my own personal reflection. Um, so it's a devotional guide. It's a PDF that you just can download. So that's for purchase on the website as well. That's awesome. That's, I was going to ask you about that because that to me is, I love backstory. We call them backstories of the rate on the radio, you know, the backstory of the song. You know, I love that. Oh, it just, oh, it, to I've me, it's yeah. always been a backstory girl. Like anytime, yep. anytime a prequel comes out yep. to a movie or, you know, I'm like, oh yes, this is what I'm here for. <laughs> no, I, 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 yeah. You tell me how you, how this song was birthed. I, I, I'm, I'm all ears. I'd love to hear, you know, it's always, it's a little disappointing when it's not as fascinating as you thought it was going to be. I know, I know. There were, I will tell you, there were a couple um, where I would look up to see, like, why the composer, there was one, I'm trying to think which one it was, but I looked to see why the composer had written the music, and literally he'd just, like, been contracted by a hymn. Yeah. (laughs) And I was like, oh, well. No, make something up. Make something better than that, you know? I, I had Robert Lamb. I had Robert Lamb of Chicago on my show one time, and I asked him, you know, where did the song, like, does anybody know what time it is? Where does where was that birth? And he said, I was out on the street, and somebody said, does anybody know what time it is? The other guy said, does anybody really care? And the, the, I'm going, no, that's not. Boy. That's so funny. You know, you that's want great. you want a little more like it was a protest. Or, yeah, yeah, you know, a little more. A a little more than just hey, hey, anything in the fridge? <laughs> I know that's awesome. That's awesome. Well, yeah, some of these, some of these really do have incredibly, incredibly absolutely stories. So, um, if you want to kind of get a little more out of just the music, um, especially since there isn't a lyric, so I will mention that the whole, the whole album is solely instrumental and it's no beautiful singing. and you don't need you know, lyrics. Not necessary sometimes. Sometimes <laughs> it's just the. It's just the way that the Lord wants to, you know, uh, I call them the Selah moments to pause and stop and think and process before you move on. And uh, this this album definitely allows, especially in the craziness of this year, everybody should get one. We'll make sure that uh, we'll do all our part to make sure everybody gets uh, hymns from home. Time went so quickly, Bethany. Thank you so much. Thank oh, you so you much. I, I hope I didn't keep you too long, but you have, you, uh, you know, I'm a bit, I'm a big fan. <laughs> well, and you know, you know, I still got family in Jersey, so you, anytime, anytime. Well, I hope uh, this thing does pass, and we'll get you up here because I would love to have you back, Bethany. You, you know, I, I would love it. I'll swing by and see all the cousins. I've got. Um, I grew up spending the summer in Bricktown with my grandparents, yep. and uh, so I've got cousins all up and down the coast and um would love and you to got family right here at the lighthouse and uh, you and are welcome anytime absolutely absolutely, absolutely. so so i'm gonna let you pick uh the song and you're gonna play dj as we close our time together uh, from the album uh, oh my goodness yep i know i'm putting you on the spot uh, you are putting me on the spot i'll tell you what it, this may not be a radio friendly one but um my i think my favorite of all of them is uh, give me Jesus, and were you there when they crucified the oh, Lord? Oh yeah, I yeah, yeah, yeah. Too. And it's it's kind of a lay on the floor, turn the lights out, and just really, you know, really soak it in. Um, so I'll give you that. But if you if you need a, an up tempo, no, that's uh, great because people have been eating turkey today, so they probably feel like laying <laughs> yes. on the floor right now. And uh, yes, they're all on a trip to Fancoma anyway. Anyway, so <laughs> we'll just we'll just send them with the uh, you know with the spirit, right? Boom, that kind of thing. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, thank you. God bless you. You're the best. Thank you so much. Thank you, Pastor Rudy, and thank you all for listening. I, I'm, I'm honored to be part of your Thanksgiving.